Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this beginner tutorial which I actually haven't made in the past, um, just a single video talking about um, states. So the reason why I decided to make this video is because um, I feel like states is one of the most important topics in React which a lot of people have a lot of difficulties in the beginning and from my personal experience helping my, my friends learn React I realized that not really understanding what states are and why they are useful is one of the main blockages um, that prevents people from actually improving and continue their, their React journey. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to present to you guys a tutorial really fast where I use my method of explaining states um, in order for you guys to be able to fully understand what they are. The code for everything I do in this tutorial will be in the description if you want to check it out. I do recommend not just copying and pasting the code. Uh, I recommend actually trying to understand what I'm doing and code along um, as you go. So with that in mind, if you guys could leave a like on the video and subscribe, I'll be very happy and let's get into the tutorial. So as you can see over here, I started out with a simple web page. I'm even going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better. Um, it's nothing much. Uh, it just says hello world. And I already have React running and installed inside of my uh, project. So the reason why I'm not showing you guys creating this is because if you want to learn states, you need to at least already know how to set up a create React app application. So uh, all I did is I just created the application, didn't make any changes, just deleted the boilerplate code and left the app component um, like this. And we're going to start from here. So what exactly are states? I know you guys probably have a, 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 a small idea of what it is. You guys know, it kind of are like variables um, that you use instead of just creating a variable like you normally do in JavaScript. So instead of doing something like this, um, let's create a variable called name and set it equal to um, Pedro, you create a state called name with a function called set name, and you use that to alter its value. Now, why exactly will we need this? Well, let's think of a scenario um, that we would probably encounter if we were working with vanilla JavaScript. So this is a scenario, correct? You can see we have a div over here with an ID called name, and it contains the name John. So in vanilla JavaScript, if you want to alter the value of this um, div, from John to Pedro, you would probably come over here, create a variable called name, set it equal to Pedro. Then if you want to change the value of this um, div, so the HTML, if you want to change the HTML to be equal to whatever value this variable currently holds, you would do something like um, document dot get element by ID. And then you would put the ID um, ref like re referring to this element, which is name. And then you would probably do something like dot inner HTML and set it equal to name. Now, this is how you usually do it in vanilla JavaScript. But you don't do this in react because of the reactive like essence of react. So this is one of the biggest points of why you would use react. Um, we don't want to be manually altering the DOM every single time some part of the state of the application changes. And when I say the state of the application, I mean, everything that is related to data, all the variables, all of that, those are all part of the state of the application. So when one variable changes its value, we don't want to manually have to alter the HTML so that it represents the new value. What we want to do is we want to just change the value of the variable and have the application automatically show the new value over here. You see, it, it isn't doing that because it's saying John. And if I save this, now it says Pedro because I did this manually over here. However, React doesn't want us to use the document um, to alter values. We do this by creating states. So how could we do something like this with a state? Well, to create a state, we first need to import over here at the top um, the use state hook. And this is probably the first hook that you will learn in React. Um, it is from React. And hooks are extremely important. Um, but for uh, beginners, I would say just to focus on the use state hook. So the use state hook um, is very easy to define. All you have to do is you create a constant. Um, and don't worry, because just because it says constant, it doesn't mean you won't be able to change the value of your of your state, you'll be able to do that. Um, but then you set it equal to use state. And you put an empty value over here. Now, what exactly is that empty value? Well, 
it, it usually depends on what kind of type is your variable. So if I were to to you to create a state that is a number, um, I would probably put something like a zero over here, because that's a good initial value for a number. If it is a string, which is our case, I would just put an empty string. You can also just put null if you want to. It doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is the value you're going to actually um, set the state to be. So setting it like this as an empty string is fine. Then you put the name of the, the state. So in our case, let's just put say name because it is the name of a person. And then you put the name of a function that will be used to change the value of the state. Now, this is where a lot of people get lost. Because why can't you just say something like name is equal to, um, I don't know, Pedro, right, and change the value of the state? Well, because states aren't necessarily inherently a variable, right? Like the way they work in, in the sense that they automatically re refresh the page or re-render the page to show its value um, isn't done in vanilla JavaScript. It isn't done in, as a variable in its own. So React put all the logic to make that work instead of this use state hook, uh, meaning that we need to follow all of the standards that React puts um, for a state to work, right? So one of the things is that if you want to alter the value of a state, you need to create a function which will do that. And usually the function starts with set and then the name of the state, which is name, so set name. And now if you want to change the value of the state from an empty string to Pedro, you can just say set name is equal to Pedro. And when I say equal, I mean, I just put the new value as an argument to the state. So I'll say Pedro. And this is how you change the value of a state. Let's take a look um, at how a state works a little bit more in action. So how would we use this in an application? Um, in the simplest way possible, um, if we want to change the value of the state and actually display that information, we could have something like a button over here, like this. Um, actually, I put it, uh, put it all in caps, but I'll just say like this. And then I say, change value. And then I'll just put an on click to this button like this. So whenever you click on this button, it will call a function. And in the function, if you're calling this inside of a of a non click, like you didn't create a separate function that you call over here, you do have to still create the function like this to then say set name, and then set it equal to something else. So I'm going to set it equal to Pedro. And you'll see that um, initially, if I delete this over here, initially, um, it will be john, but when I click on it, it will be Pedro. Why didn't it show is because we're actually not displaying the name variable yet. Um, we're just displaying um, the word John. So we need to actually put the state over here to be displayed in the div. And you can see it says Pedro. But why does it say Pedro? Because the value was Pedro before, but when we refresh the page, now it's empty. Because initially we said that its initial value is an empty string. But if we set the initial value to John, it will initially be John. And when I click on the button, it'll change to Pedro. So it, it, what happened here is we had this state called name, and it will it was displaying the value John initially, and without having to grab the div and alter its H inner HTML, when the value of the variable name changed, when we set it to Pedro, the whole page rec told the whole page to just re render, so that it will now show the new values for the states. So now it shows over here Pedro instead of John. Now, um, you can see when we refresh the page, it's back to John because um, it goes back to its initial um, stage, which um, John was the initial value, right? So what are good examples to exemplify um, how um, a state actually works under the hood? So this is one of the most common examples out there. It is to create a state called count and a, a function called set count. Now count will be a number and it will start at zero. And we want to have some sort of functionality where, and I'll just delete the ID over here because that was for the first example. Um, we want the functionality to be that when you click on a button, it will increment the value of the count state and then display the, the numbers increasing on the screen. Because right now when I click on the button, it actually nothing happens because we didn't put that functionality, but um, we want to make it so that when we click on it, it will show like one, two, three, four, five. Now, to show you guys exactly that thing I mentioned in the beginning where you can, you need to use the set count to increase or to change the value of a state, let's try making so that when you click on this button, we'll set count equal to count plus one. So what we're doing right here is we're saying, okay, when you click on this button, 
set the value of the count state to be equal to whatever it is right now. So it will be zero plus one. So it, we would imagine that it will become one, right? It will, it will keep increasing every time we click on the button. But that's not how it works. It doesn't work. Um, as you can see, it's not increasing. Because as I mentioned previously, that's not how states work, you need to use the function. So I'm going to grab the set count and put it over here. And what do we set this equal to? Well, we usually as the first example that I, I showed you guys, we were setting this equal to um, a specific value. But now we want to do something different, we want to set it equal to um, a value that keeps changing, right? So what we can do is we can actually use the original state like this and say, I want to set count equal to the current count plus one, which um, if we look over here, it will work because when I click on the button, it becomes one, then it becomes two, then it becomes three, four, five, whatever we want, we can keep clicking and it will automatically re render the page to show the new value. And you can see that um, this happens because we use the original count. Now there's a different version of how you can do this, which is you can access the current value of the state in this uh, set count function without using the um, state variable over here. So if for some reason, I only have access to this function in a component, and I don't have access to this, I can still use its current value to, uh, to set a new value by creating a function inside of here, like this, and just returning uh, some value. So for example, if we want to have access to the pre to the current value uh, of the state, I can put uh, call this argument to this function current value, and then just return back the current value plus one. This is the exact same thing as what we did before. Now, in the majority, uh, like of the situations you'll encounter this, you'll probably just use this, um, like we did before, like set count equals to count plus one. But if you encounter a situation where you don't have access to the count, you can do something like this. And you'll see that um, it still works because if I click on the button, it still increases. So um, this is a very common example, just increasing variables like this. Now states are much more useful than that. So I didn't want to keep it just like this in the video, I actually wanted to show you guys a very, very common use case where you will be using this almost all the time. And that will be working with inputs. So now picture this, we have an input over here. And we can start writing on the input, we can write whatever we want. Um, ideally, as you can see by the placeholder, we're supposed to write names. Now, what do we want to do with this? Well, we want to have right below this some sort of um, like header tag, so h1, displaying um, in real time, whatever you're typing on the input. Now, to do this, we need to create a state that will represent the, the value of the input. So I'll come over here, and I'll say const um, equal to use state. And it will be a string because the value of the input will be a name. So we can just set it equal to an empty string initially, then um, we can give this a name. Um, for simplicity reasons, I'll just say input name as the variable name, but you can call it whatever you want. And I can say the function is set input name. Now, how I display this is basically just putting this like over here, but you see nothing happens because it is initially empty, unless we put something like I write a bunch of letters and the numbers, you can see it will be displayed, but initially it is empty. What we want is we need to say that whenever there's a change to this input, we want to display the change over here. So with inputs, what you do is you come over here, you say on change, and this over here calls a function. And we can write this in line, meaning that we can just write it directly over here, or we can create an external function that we call over here. But similar to what we did with the on click on the button, we'll just write it inside of here. So I'll say something like this, I'll create a function. And this function will take in as an argument to it, the event, this is very common, not just in react, um, but just in JavaScript in general, um, you can grab the event, which represents the attributes for this input you can use this event to access the current value of the input, which is in theory, what we want to set our state to be equal to. So if I say something like event, uh, not this, I can say event dot target dot value, this will give us every single time there's a change in the input. So every time someone puts a letter or deletes a letter or whatever, this function will be called, and this will represent the current value in the input. So all we have to do is we have to say set input name 
to be equal to the current value of the input. And you can see that now if I type any letter over here, it will automatically appear over here because it is setting the current value of this of the input as the state. And remember that whenever there's a change in the state value, it re renders the page so that when whenever we call and try to display that state inside of our HTML or our JSX, it will automatically show the new value. So I can technically just write Pedro or whatever, I'll write Pedro tech. And you can see it's automatically showing everything you can type this forever, it works for deleting as well. Um, and yeah, that's this is just perfect. You can use this in many situations, not specifically displaying the real time um, value of the input. But when you have a form, this is a good way of getting the, the values that are, that are written by the user inside of the form so that you can just keep them as a state. So this is probably the biggest example of when you would use um, states. Um, when in the reality, you'll actually use states everywhere. But um, I really hope this quick introduction um, was valuable for you guys. I already have some videos explaining states, but I never had a very specific video where I could just go over uh, a, some good examples that I think of um, to show you guys if you're, you guys are beginners, um, try to explain as best as I can. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I would massively appreciate it because it will help support my channel, push my videos to more people and it will just help me overall. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them as a comment in the in, in the comment section. And if you want to check out our community, we actually have a Discord, which the link will be in the description. Thanks again for watching the video and I see you guys next time.